Do you want life to be easier? Yes. Do you find yourself getting distracted? Yes. Distractions can actually lead to us committing twice as many errors as usual. Focus and productivity can suffer. Now, you know, I'm a nurse and honestly, when we are drawing up medications, especially medications that could seriously harm someone if the dose was wrong, it's really important not to be distracted. But yet in our homes and in our businesses, we do not often have things set up properly to avoid this. And Honestly, if you just want to make everything easier in your life, if you want to make navigating your home easier, if you want to make doing things in your business quicker and easier, let's chat about environmental design. Grab your tea and let's go. James Clear, who wrote the book Atomic Habits, says that by changing your surroundings, you can place a hurdle in the way of bad behaviors but remove the barriers of the good ones. I like to refer to this strategy as environmental design, James Clear says, and I absolutely love this. Now, for me, I've used this a little bit in my house in the past. Like in my kitchen, I would have all of the, the utensils I would use more frequently right next to the stove. We keep our pans next to the stove. We keep our plates not too far, and then the cutlery right below that. And I will get into the tea station in a minute because there is some drama there right now. But once I started adopting environmental design, making sure that things were set up properly to support me in the things I needed, but also to make it a little bit harder to do those not so good things, it was better. One of the things James suggests is that if you actually want to watch TV, not to have all of your furniture pointed towards the TV, which we do in my house and I honestly can't see us changing. I'm just gonna be be honest with you like the people I live with would not like that but he says like turn a couple chairs away and have like a book there actually in our dining room we have chairs in there and a fireplace and I set that up so that I could go in there and read and it is perfect especially in the winter it is beyond cozy and my husband actually had said oh maybe we should put a tv in there and I was like Heck no, we are not putting a TV in there. So I wanna show you one of the things I have adopted uh, up in my bathroom for environmental design. And I think you might like it. Um, it's gonna be echoey, but here's the thing. I really, really want to be vibrating at a high frequency. Like I wanna be feeling really happy. And I was waking up and being like, I am so grateful for everything in my life. Honestly, like thinking about reasons why I was grateful. Like I was grateful about, you know, like the weather that it had changed, grateful about our house, but little things too. Grateful for the time I had with my dad while he was alive, not that that's little, but just anything feeling a lot of gratitude and I was feeling really good, but then suddenly things might not go so well. So then I won't be feeling as great. And I want to keep my momentum of happiness going. I want to keep mom my momentum of being like grateful going. And I want to be manifesting great things coming into my life. And I want to be saying things that make me feel good. And so I now have this post-it note on my mirror. And you know what? I didn't, um, I made it extra dirty just for you guys. That's not really the truth. It was, uh, needs to be cleaned. But anyway, so I have this post-it note on my mirror and, and I will change things. Like it doesn't always have to be the same, but this one, it says, work out, you'll feel great. Every time I work out, I feel great. Sometimes it doesn't feel great while I'm working out, but when I'm done, I will feel so much better after. Like I will have those endorphins. I will be singing. I sing while I work out. I don't care. My kids have said they hate it. It's the worst singing I've heard in years. But I know when I'm working out that when I'm done, I'm going to feel so much better. And so for me, it's a huge, huge important thing that I get that in my day. And I wanted to remind myself to meditate because when I meditate, I feel great. It just calms my mind and doing these things just help to elevate my mood. Having this post-it note here is set up so that I am exactly aware of what I need to do because this reminds me first thing in the morning I see that if I'm going to bed at night and I see I haven't done anything there then I know I need to do those things and so that is another reason why it is great to set your environment up to support you. This post-it note supports me. What kind of post-it notes could you use? So the bedroom environment for me is absolutely huge. I like to have my bedroom as calm as possible. I like to have very little things on the dressers. We have a TV. 
We were considering getting rid of the TV and we didn't have one for a long time because you shouldn't watch TV in bed, they say. But the funny thing is my husband and I always snuggle. He puts his head on my lap and we watch like one show together. It's actually a really nice thing. And for now, we're just gonna keep that going. We have teenagers, it's a spot where we can escape the kids. So for now, that's what we're doing. I want my bedroom to be calm. I don't really want it to be a place the kids come and hang out. And I want it to be set up for me to have maximum sort of like rest success or whatever, supporting my environment. And so that is not keeping this puppy in here. I used to charge her right there, not anymore. Now she is banished to the office because I don't want my phone anywhere near me when I'm sleeping. In fact, I plug it in probably around eight, eight or nine every night and I don't even usually look at it until eight or nine in the morning. And usually I'm just like bringing it along to listen to like a book or a podcast on my way home from dropping off the kids. And then I don't even look at social media for a while. The way to keep my phone away from me is not to keep it next to me in my bed because if I'm looking at that first thing in the day, there's actually a lot of studies that show that you're less productive when you are looking at your phone first thing in the morning. I have my little alarm clock that I absolutely love and this is exactly now what I just absolutely love it. It's so simple and I just set it at night, turn it on. My drawer, really simple. I only have the things I need. I've got my earplugs, the remotes for the TV, magnesium to help me sleep, hand cream, a lip gloss. This room is set up for rest and relaxation. No extra stuff. And ideally one day we won't even have a TV in here. Your kitchen needs to flow. If you're working at home in particular, you want to be efficient in the kitchen. You don't want to be coming in and then be like distracted by piles of things everywhere. I like to keep the surfaces pretty clean in my kitchen. This right now is not looking so good. Finally, after saving up for like seven years, we're getting our cupboards painted, new counters that will be lighter because we're on the side of a mountain, so it's really dark, and new backsplash. So because we have no backsplash right now, um, I had to take everything off the counters just so that we could work on it. And I ended up having stuff strewn about, which showed me just how important it was to have things in the proper spots. Ideally, you keep things exactly where you're using them. Normally, I have my tea station set up. I keep my tea in this little cupboard. The cups go here and the glasses are here. And we have our kettle, usually sort of tucked into the corner there and the soda stream there as well. Instead of going all over the kitchen, like you saw how that was not working. I like to have everything right where I need it. Like my tea strainers are up here as well. And the spoons, everything is right there. The fridge is right there for the milk. So it's set up for maximum efficiency. And that is why environmental design is so good because you are setting things up to make the things that need to be easy easier. For eating healthier, it's very important to have things set up to support that and to make eating not as healthy a little bit harder. So I like to keep the junk food sort of tucked away and often I have to hide it from my family. One time, funny story, I had to actually hide a bag of chocolates that we got from Hawaii in a Ziploc bag, hid them in the flour. My husband had no idea that's where they were. It was great. And then my friend told him where it was. I was not very happy. But the thing is, if you want to eat healthy, you have to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. So one of the things I did yesterday, I made these delicious salads. This is the last one actually, because I made one for myself to eat yesterday. I gave one to my husband and then I ate one today, just, just a little while ago. And then this is tomorrow's salad. And I think I'm going to do this even more often. It's great. It's ready to go. Just dump it in a bowl and eat it up. I finally realized that I was not eating healthy. And the reason why I was eating a healthy breakfast, a healthy dinner, and I was like, what is the problem? So I like any good coach, I was seeing my coach. He said like, well, what's the problem? Do you meal plan? And I was like, yes, I meal plan. Come on. And then I was like, well, I don't meal plan lunch. And he was like, well, maybe you should. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should. So basically I started meal planning lunch. It's so much easier. So now I have like this delicious lunch ready. 
I like to make sure that I have like healthy food around. My good friend, Maddie, her channel is called Let's Eat Plants. It's a vegan channel, but she talks all about meal prep, which is huge. So she will go to the store, come back, cut up all of her fruits and vegetables, get them ready so that she can eat them during the week. So that is something that you could do to support yourself in the kitchen with environmental design. I like to have my environment set up to support me because I want to have as much spare time as possible. And that is no different when I'm working in my business, in my office. I want to have my office set up to support me. When I am working, I don't want a bunch of extra things on my desk. I will sometimes like have a glass of water. I have one picture of my family. Honestly, I don't really need it because they're here, but I like having that one picture. I have my tissues because I have allergies. I've got an oil diffuser because sometimes putting the oil just helps me be able to concentrate more. But honestly, it's just like, I don't wanna put it away because I feel like it's gonna spill and make a mess. But really, you can focus much better when you have a lot less distraction. So having your office set up properly for good flow is great. Having your pad of paper there at the ready and a pen or pencil that is sharpened and make sure that you don't have a bunch of extra things out. You don't have a lot of extra papers or any extra papers. You have a good system for where you keep your papers, where you put things, and you know exactly where things are so you can grab them. So you need a highlighter, you know exactly where it is. You can have it in like less than five seconds, but for the most part, you don't have it out because you don't need it. And it goes the same with like post-it notes and things like that. A lot of people, they can get really into post-it notes, but unless you have a good system for post-it notes, they can often hold you back because then you will suddenly end up with a pile of post-it notes and be like, oh my gosh, like what am I going to do with all of those post-it notes? I actually went through all of my post-it notes and I filed them on my iPad in a system that I use to keep sort of like just notes and ideas sort of like a bullet journal. If you had a bullet journal, that would probably work even better. I like post-it notes when you are using them to remind you of things. So like say in the morning, my coach, he uses one and he puts it right on his screen. And it's like, I think it's like the three things he needs to do for the day. And that's exactly how I use them. Sometimes I have a post-it note and it says like, remember to fix the internet because occasionally I've changed the times to accommodate my kids and my husband. But overall, I want to make sure that I am not cluttering my mind and my desk with post-it notes because in the past, like I've had them all over. Another thing is to make sure that you don't have a lot of extra things out, even if you use them often. For me, I use a microphone a lot of the time, most days. Now, if I was using it every day, I would have it out and I would just have it tucked away. Because I don't use it every day, I will unplug it and put it away just because I don't want extra things in my eyesight that will distract me. And remember when we were talking about the phone before, the phone is another thing that even just having it in your eye line, it can actually make you up to 30% less efficient. You really don't want that. The whole point of the environmental design is to support it so you can get into the flow better. So you can actually like get that work going, but also so that you can get more time in life so you can enjoy life more and you can make it so that you are as efficient as possible, but then you can get out there and go for a hike with your family. Now I made a special three part video series all about setting up your workspace, whether it's at home or actually at work, for maximum productivity and focus. So check that link below for that focus list and click this link right here. It is my focus playlist. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. 